Okay, thanks for coming to the OpenShift Commons event. My name is Ricardo Noriega. I work in the edge computing team as part of the Emerging Technologies Organization within uh, Red Hat's office of the CTO. And yeah, I'm uh, Miguel. Um, I also work on the uh, Emerging Technologies uh, Edge department. And we're here to present Microshift. Um, new and very exciting project is getting a lot of attention lately. And as we say, more or less, it's a lightweight implementation of OpenSheet for, for the edge. So I'm gonna do, we are gonna do like a brief introduction, some few slides, and then uh, a cool demo. I, I, I hope the demo gods, you know, <laughs> are good with us. And yeah, to give you a, a little bit of, explain a, a little bit the situation. Um, for the past, over, for over a decade, the IT industry has been trying to move workloads from uh, their legacy appliances to, to the data center, to centralized locations, to the cloud. But however, more and more device, devices are connected to, to the internet. Uh, those devices are producing huge amount, uh, amounts of data and it's getting um, important to, to get computing power uh, next to where the data is generated, which is near those uh, edge computing devices and, and those remote locations. But the question is not about putting computing power there. The question is about if I'm able to uh, manage the workloads that I run in the cloud, in those data centers, the same way that I, um, if I can do it the same way in the edge. So this is where Microsoft was was born. If you look at Red Hat's portfolio, um, in one side of the spectrum we have OpenShift, which is our, it's Red Hat's Kubernetes distribution um, on asteroids, let's say. Um, it's, it's well designed for, for data centers and for the cloud. And Red Hat has been doing a huge effort to accommodate OpenShift to different topologies and different architectures, like we provide uh, distributed uh, worker nodes, we provide three nodes cluster, we provide um, lately single node OpenShift, right? And in the other side of the spectrum, we have rel 4 edge rel 4 edge is um, a flavor of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux that is optimized for edge computing use cases. And when I say optimized, it's because we uh, pick certain technologies that are very suitable for, for these scenarios, like um, RPM OS 3 for immutability, uh, automatic upgrades and rollbacks in case something goes wrong, um, secure onboarding process for devices, and this operating system is very well designed for field, uh, field deployed devices. I will explain later what it is. And the recommended way to, to deploy applications on, on rel 4 edge is by using Podman, usually static uh, containerized workloads. workloads. So Microsoft comes in to fill the gap in between, right? As I mentioned before, to try to manage this, the, our workloads consistently from the cloud to the edge. There you go. And what is Microsoft? Microsoft is a small form factor OpenShift, optimized for field deployed devices. Uh, our team has been really focused on integrating um, Microsoft into rel 4 edge it provides a minimal OpenShift experience, and when I say minimal, it's because we provide a lot of OpenShift APIs, like uh, routes, uh, security uh, context constraints, um, et cetera, but we don't picture Microsoft as, for example, a platform to build your own container images in the edge. It, it doesn't make, uh, make ma much sense for edge computing use cases. It's uh, developed for resource-constrained environments where maybe uh, connectivity, network connectivity is um, you know, unstable or maybe not present. Um, it can be managed as any other Kubernetes cluster uh, by an orchestrator like ACM, our advanced cluster manager. And it is designed as a single binary that contains, uh, I will show you later, but contains most of the Kubernetes components and OpenShift components. Uh, it is shipped as an RPM or a container image, and uh, it's compiled for different architectures, of course, x86, ARM, uh, but also PowerPC, RISC-V, and, and so on. 
So what is this field deploy devices? I have uh, like something to show here. This is a Jetson Nano from NVIDIA. It's really, really like a, this is the developer kit that has uh, some connectivity and uh, <laughs> something just fall off. You know, they're very cheap, so. <laughs> and um, the question is that why, why are they so different from, from servers, right? Like, what, the, what are the characteristics that make them special? So we all are kind of used to work with servers. Servers are highly standardized and, and highly scalable. You can, for example, um, plug more memory, plug more storage, accelerator cards, and so on. But these field deploy devices are usually like systems on a board, uh, systems on chip or single board computer, sorry, that are really pre-integrated. And, and it's very difficult to you know, put more add-ons on top. Um, the scenarios where you deploy these field deploy devices are usually um, remote locations with no physical security barriers, um, with network uh, with net, uh, the network that is unstable or not present. Um, there is no out of band management system. Probably there is no SSH enabled even. So the way that we operate these devices compared to servers is very different, and the way that we deploy those devices is is completely, you know, uh, the opposite from, from servers in a centralized location, in a, in a data center. Very quickly, this is uh, how we picture the, the deployment workflow of a field deploy device. So I'm a customer and I want to deploy my edge solution, right, my application. So um, Red Hat has a software called Image Builder to, to create customized images of Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Rail for Edge as well. So I create my own image with my dependencies and, for example, Microsoft, right? Um, then I go to my hardware vendor and I say, I want 2,000 devices, and you can put this image on, on those devices. So finally, the manufacturer will put the devices in a box, send it to re the remote locations, and once the devices are there, um, the, a technician will unbox the device, plug it to the wall, plug the network cable, power cable, and the job is done. In theory, uh, there will be um, a device management system somewhere that will listen for registration. And um, RHEL uh, is shipping um, what we call FDO, the FIDO uh, device on board, which is a system that using um, keepers and ownership vouchers will allow a secure registration of those devices. Uh, finally, once the, um, the device is registered into my system, it will, for example, get uh, registered against uh, my ACM, Advanced Cluster Manager um, instance, and I will have 2,000 devices ready to get my applications deployed in a GitOps way. So this is somehow the, the workflow that we picture. How we compare OpenShift with Microsoft? Um, OpenShift, you can think, think about OpenShift as this vertically uh, integrated solution that is for those mm, people that want Kubernetes on, on, you know, in the cloud, on a virtualized environment, or on, on physical appliances, and don't want to bother about uh, the infrastructure that is lying on top, the operating system, and so on. Mm, uh, OpenShift ships uh, cluster operators, so uh, those will be able to manage the infrastructure, the operating system, the versions of different components, and so on. However, Microsoft is, for, uh, is designed for the edge, for those customers that want, or those users that want, to build their own image of the operating system and want to manage those devices the way that they want. Like, it could be with Red Hat Fleet Manager or some other orchestrator, right? Finally, very quickly, because the interesting part is the demo, it's gonna be really cool. Um, this is the architecture. Uh, we have a binary that contains all of the Kubernetes control plane and node uh, components, plus, plus OpenShift APIs. We talk to Cryo to schedule pods and so on via a socket. We have uh, the state in, a, uh, in, the, in the file system. And we manage, we lifecycle manage Microsoft uh, with systemd. Um, as you can see, there is an RPM OS stream image. When you build Rail for Edge, 
uh, RPM OS 3 will contain um, the list of RPMs that are part of the system and th that is immutable. If you want to upgrade the system, you will have to build a new image and the upgrade will be done automatically, but it's part of, you know, it's, um, all, those, all that software is uh, completely uh, immutable. You, you cannot change it, let's say. And finally, just to show you that uh, Microshift is about the glue of the components. It's not a, about the components itself, because Red Hat and, and the OpenShift team has a lot of experience about building uh, Kubernetes and, and uh, specific components. So we pull every bit from, from OpenShift. And that's more or less it. Uh, I hand it over to Miguel and okay. the demo. Yeah, I will go with the demo just to give you an overview because you cannot see it from there. Uh, we have a small device in here running an ARM64. Uh, this is actually a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, and, okay. So this device uh, may, ah, the screen say size changed. So hopefully, yeah, you can see it. Um, so yeah, it's still running. Um, so I wanted to show you that, yeah, Microsoft is running here. Um, as a system D service. Um, yeah, it's taking uh, 700 uh, megabytes of RAM. And together with the application that we are running now that has some uh, AI uh, models, it's using like 1.4 gigabytes. We, we recommend two gigabytes at least so you are able to run the uh, operating system and, and your application. Um, so when, when Microsoft uh, starts for the, for the first time, it will create um, a directory uh, with uh, yeah, some of the files that it needs, the ATC database um, and, and resources. One of them is the, the cube config file. You normally will then use that and you will have like a management system on, on top to, and, and you don't need to connect to the API running on the device, but the device will connect to the management system and you manage your workload. Uh, but yeah, just for the purposes of, of showing you, uh, we can see the, the pods running. Uh, what happened? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you can see the pods running. Like the bottom ones are uh, Microsoft workloads. Uh, like we have a service CI, the router, uh, core DNS. Uh, for now we have Flannel, but we are still in the process of deciding what are we going to use there. And also um, the Kubebeard uh, hotspot provisioner, but that's still being yeah. So as you can see, uh, our application is, is running um, is running here on the default namespace. Something that we provide, at least to, to bootstrap an initial uh, workload, is using manifests for that. And as you can see here, uh, we have a simple customization. So I'm running. Uh, an access point, a server for some cameras that we have here and we are going to connect in a second, uh, then a regular uh, service uh, and an OpenShift route, that, which is going to be announced via MDNS for the cameras. So the cameras will be connecting to the, uh, to the access point running in, in Microsoft and um, they will connect to the camera server and, and then the application in there is going to be analyzing the um, the video feed. Oh, where is my? I wanted to show you a little bit of this. Uh, no, well, yeah. So we we made the the firmware of those cameras uh, custom. So it, those are very cheap cameras, ASP thirty two based microcontroller ones. 
Uh, so they will look for the um, um, uh, for the Microsoft uh, access point, uh, and they will try to to find uh, the the application via MDNS, and then register uh, on the camera server, and then the camera server connects and, and gets the video feed, and then on the server side we have a. a a small application, like very simple, it's not optimized or, or anything. We are using the face uh, recognition Python library that is going to process the video feeds, looking for faces, and try to look for Ricardo and me, and put a um, put name, and yeah. So let's try to do the, the demo part. So with that running in there, uh, okay, maybe you can grab one. I can grab another one. These are the cameras. Like yeah, let me. Five dollars each one. Very, very, very cheap. So if I log uh, here, the, the camera server, yeah, his camera already connected to the to the server, and the server probably connected back, hopefully, to, <laughs> to the camera. And when I plug this one, this one is also connected to the access point running in Microsoft and then into this service. And now we have a, a, a video feed here, uh, Microsoft. Video feed, yeah, hopefully, oh, very little, why? Okay, so yeah, the workload in, in Microsoft is uh, like processing the, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm unknown. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we, yeah, not, not, not enough resolution, but if you want to try it around, hopefully it will get, maybe, I don't know how, how far will it go. <laughs> yeah, the resolution is not very good, as you can see, and and the lighting and so on. Yeah, it's, these are very, Unknown. very cheap cameras. So, okay, you, you have your application here, and, and the fun of, of um, having something like this is that, um, I mean, you, you can manage your workloads as regular Kubernetes workloads, so you can see, uh, we can edit the camera server, Okay, and we can switch to a different version of the image. Uh, I think it's two, or I don't remember now. <laughs> Let's try. Thank you. Yeah, so the new version is running, the previous has terminated, probably I, I need to uh, reconnect the video feed. Yeah, it's putting up. It's coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably the, the cameras also have some timeout. If they see that the server is not streaming video, they will wait for a while and then they will reconnect to the to the server again. Yeah, there, there they are. So our new version has a very advanced uh, deep fake technology. <laughs> you can see the power it's... of AI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but with, with Microsoft and, and Rail for it, uh, the idea is that, I mean, you, you, can, you can have the, the power to manage uh, your uh, edge devices. You can even embed your application containers into the image of the container, so it, I mean, it will not need to download the, the images of your application containers, and maybe you just manage the, the image or, of your device, and you tell the device to update, and it will do an atomic update, and your application is inside, and, and you can even have off, offline devices, even that is not very edge, but <laughs> yeah. You could even do that. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Just a, a, a quick question. Um, so it's not GA yet, is it? 
Is this still a beta? Where are we at with this product wise Yeah, right Someone's now, asking on virtually. Right now it's a community project, and hopefully by the end of the year, there will be some limited availability. Awesome. So, and thank so you everybody out, go grab your Raspberry Pis, go yeah. get edgy, <laughs> and uh, Thanks. we'll do that.